and you got what you wanted. I felt no ways. I felt no ways. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell today, we're talking about Atlanta season one, episode eight, The Club. I love these one setting episodes. I mean, there was a little scene at the end with the diner. We'll get to that. But what I love most about these one setting episodes is they speak so much on the culture, not just back in 2016 when this episode dropped, but some of these topics and themes are still relevant today. We're gonna get into them, but first let's start with the plot line. The episode opens up with Al, Ern, and Darius chilling in bottle service. It looks like none of them are really having it. If you look off in the distance, the people in the other bottle service with another rapper who's further along than Paperboy is having a good old time. It looks lit over there. If I was there, I wouldn't wanna be where Paperboy is. I'm just gonna keep it real. But the thing that really got me is they're talking back and forth. Somehow Paperboy gets on the topic that he doesn't trust Nigerians. Ern looks over slowly at Darius. He's Nigerian. So this is the second time in season one that they mentioned Darius is Nigerian. How could I forget by our season three reviews? Thank you again for letting me know in the comment section. So after that banter, someone comes up and they say, are you Paperboy? Paperboy has a little attitude. He's already feeling stank because his area is pretty scarce. And the guy starts rapping the lyrics. I thought he was gonna do a one, two bars. This guy does everything to the hook, even going high key, off key. Paperboy's like, okay, okay, enough. That's when Ern says, it's my cue to go find homeboy to pay us for a club appearance. And that begins the wild goose chase. So Ern finds the guy and maybe he's Nigerian. That's why Paperboy said he didn't trust him. I don't know what it was. But what I do know is the guy's like, come with me. And you know how it is back in the day, I can't say so much because I haven't been since the panorama, but when clubs are packed and you have to bob and weave through that, it's easy to get lost. So of course, the first time it happens, it doesn't seem as sus. But the second time around, when he finds homeboy at the bar and he's like, hey, where have you been? Just playing it cool. I knew this guy was up to no good. Then he says, okay, just help me deliver these shots and I'll give you the money. <laughs> That's when he's like, I'll give the shots to these girls. And Ern's like, I don't like shots. He's like, just give them to the girls and we'll go. He gives them to the girls. The girls are like, we don't want shots for me. He's like, no, it's not for me. I'm with Chris. We don't know Chris either. He looks over. Chris disappeared like Houdini. That's when Ern says, I hate shots. Scene switches over to Paperboy where he's chilling with Darius and Darius mentions, you know, I don't mind the club. I only pay for drinks 20% of the time. Paperboy's like, how do you manage that? I don't know. I'm just the type of person that people buy my drinks. I said, must be nice. <laughs> That's when Darius says to Paperboy, you know, she's been eyeing you all night. You should try call over. And Paperboy says, how do I even know she's looking at me? That's how I feel all the time. I never know people are looking at me, but that's because I have an eye disease. That's when Darius mentions that he's been giving creepy looks all night. So it can't be him because if she noticed, she would have went way left. So Paperboy steps on the sofa, invites people in, and she takes no hesitation, no time wasted to come over. They start to kiki, seems like there's a connection and a vibe. They're laughing. I don't really know what they're talking about because this is in between scenes of Ern chasing down the club owner. And oh my gosh, we'll get back to that in a second. It's giving me escort tease. Even the first time I watched this six years ago, I was like, she's not really, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's what she said or just the aura she has, but something's not, it's not genuine there. And it really got me at the end where Paperboy thought he was gonna go home with her, calls up Darius, like, where are you at? Looks and she's gone. He goes up like, can I get a number? She's like, I'll give you my Instagram. He's like, come on, stop playing. She's like, I have a boyfriend. Really? You have a boyfriend? You waste my time? She's like, wasting your time? This is what you came here. You went out to the club to have a good time to talk to cute girls. You got what you wanted. And this brings me right to present day. So I don't know if you guys are on social platforms where I am, but if you go on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, you're gonna stumble on, scroll upon something that has to do with the dating spear, the man of spear, red pill versus pink pill. It's a whole mess out there. If dating was bad enough in 2016, I don't know what it's gonna look like in 2026, because 2022 right now, it's mean in these streets. I mean, just throwing it out there, the late Kevin Samuels. Some of the things he was saying, right? Some of the things he was saying, all the way is wrong. It's crazy to me seeing this commentary between these two characters, because it really encapsulates 
that whole dichotomy of dating present day where it seems like women want one thing and men want one thing but i'm just like if love is the goal then why are you trying to get flued out or get one over and get a bag and be all city girl or why are you trying to swindle these women and not give them no love and withhold and want them to be feminine but ask them to be masculine it just makes no sense to me let me know if you find sense in it because it doesn't so when she was basically saying this is an exchange this is a good time you got what you wanted i felt no ways i felt no ways because it really does play into the theme that the club is just a facade back to earn for a bit after he loses homeboy from giving the shots to people that neither of them knew chris asks him do you want to wash your hands earn is not falling for it this time fool me once fool me twice three times i'm the fool so he doesn't even wash his hands which is kind of grimy <laughs> the man says come with me to the bar i'll get you a drink earn order something hella expensive because the man makes a comment about it that's when they're talking, Ern starts to drink, and I don't know why he's not paying attention, but Homeboy takes a couple steps back, disappears again like Houdini behind the turning door, and I'm laughing so hard. This is when the bartender character comes into play. She's laughing at Ern too, but he's not having any part of it. She's like, lighten up. What's your problem? She offers him a shot. He hates shots, but he still takes it. And this is where Ern starts to go downhill. He really can't handle his alcohol. She's trying to bring him back down another level, offers him a drink. And while he's drinking, she says to him, you guys are all here for the same thing. I can tell you're here for business, but really you're here to make money to feel like somebody. So in essence, you're the same as everyone else here. Yeah, people are here to make themselves feel good or feel exotic or elite because there's exclusion in play, but at the end of the day, you're all here to feel special, to feel valuable. And it really plays into values episode and some of the themes in that one too. It also points out that there was four girls coming in, but the bouncer only lets two because the two that get in, they're gonna have more of an experience because they were allowed in. And that reminds me of all the Chris Brown drama, what, two, three years ago, where he'd only let a certain type of girl in his bottle service area. And the elitism that's involved with excluding people in the club, I'll never get it. I don't like crowds to begin with. And since the panorama, I don't know if I'll put myself in this position again, but I'm not here for the shenanigans, especially since I worked in the industry for so long. I have seen how the psychology of it works and it really is a psychology. Not really here for that. At one point, Ern gets irritated again. He's like, can I have my bill? She's like, you better tip good. Being a little flirtatious with it. Hands him the receipt that says free something. I don't know if it says free alcohol because it's in cursive and I can't see that well. But somehow, maybe it was on the receipt, he gets the code to enter into that secret room, walks down, puffs up his chest, but throws up, trying to demand money back from the bar owner who's not having any parts of it. He breaks down the splits real quick. You're getting $7.50 because it's a club appearance where you didn't perform. And Ern's like, we never negotiated that. Well, I don't know if it was on the contract or not, or this guy is just super sketch could be a little bit of both he's giving me fire festival vibes if you ask me oh he had his flyers printed that cost money i don't think flyers cost 4k today okay but whatever you can see how the music industry really breaks things down to break the artist down everyone seems to get a piece of the pie except for the person who's the creative in the process and even though this is a small example it really does speak to the bigger system of play sticking to it for the sake of example though if you break down tony braxton tlc new edition story those are just three very stark examples of how all of the splits ended up leaving them destitute. One thing I love about Paperboy is he don't play with his paper. Earn comes out after Paperboy got shaded by the girl and he has a face on him that looks like a sad dog. He tells him, oh, we only got 750. Paperboy's not having any parts of it. Someone comes up to Earn who hasn't seen him in a minute trying to say hi, Paperboy. Just no parts Ern said i don't come off strong like you that's probably why if he was domineering maybe he wouldn't have been swindled to 750. paperboy enters back into the bar manager's office slams the door the energy is completely different now the chick that's chilling there is terrified the other people in the room are just like who's this paperboy slaps him up real quick demands the money the guy gives him everything and he also takes some bottles of alcohol on his way out the man is fixing himself after being beaten up, saying that guy's going to be a star. Calls the police on him too. 
Somewhere in the middle of this, Darius decided to go out to watch people smoke. I thought that was weird, because I'm like, why would you go out? I personally hate the smell of cigarette smoke. I don't smoke, so I don't want to be around smokers. So the fact that he went out to watch people smoke, I, what's the situation with that? He spoke to the security before he left. You think he's building up a little rapport, but when he comes back, security guard doesn't know him anymore. He's trying to say, we were just talking. I have the wristband. He's like, that's not the right wristband to get here. I have another one. He's, I don't even know what that is, but that's not the color to get in here. Darius says, it's okay. It's meaningless anyway. I said, here goes Darius with the philosophical quotes yet again. I hope that we have a Darius solo episode in season four. That's what I'm wishing for. When he said, this is meaningless anyway, that hit different. I remember being at the restaurant in the first couple nights that I worked until two or four with extended liquor, the lights would go on and I'm just like, this was not real to begin with. When you see the garbage on the floor, the bartender starting to sweep up, there's no more ambient lighting, everything is stark. It was all make believe. <laughs> and when he said this is meaningless, I just said, it really is, isn't it? Anytime I go to a restaurant now, I have a jaded view. Where does that leave us? Oh, <laughs> at this point, Al and Ern are laughing in the parking lot. Everyone seems to be leaving, but still kind of chilling. You know that in between time. All of a sudden, boop, 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 everyone disperses. It even looks like a moped runs over some people in the distance. Did I see that right? And then the scene cuts to the diner where the three of them are laughing. Darius is already at home by this point eating cereal and playing video games. You can hear in the distance, the TV is on, and then we see it, is reporting on the shooting, and suddenly Paperboy is a suspect, and he says, I hate clubs. It's almost like a roller coaster of emotions where Paperboy, throughout the episode, is trying to enjoy club life. He hated it when he got there. He liked it when he was being entertained by female energy. He hated it when he didn't get what he wanted. He was laughing about it when he got his money, and then he hated it when he was being suspected of something he didn't do. With Ern, same thing. I think he was enjoying himself in the company of the bartender and kind of seeing things from a different perspective. That vantage point gave him maybe some savvy that he can use in his business going forward. And Darius, Darius was just over. He was perfectly fine going home and eating cereal and playing his games. Overall, this episode was hilarious to me. It said so much without saying too much. And I can't wait to hear what you have to share about it, what you took away from it. So leave it down below. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.